What up YouTube? We're gonna drive right into it today. Premiere Pro system requirements for 2021. So I spent uh, 30 minutes recording a video which was all based off of my recommendations and experience that it seemed to work for me in Premiere Pro. And then I started thinking to myself like I have no idea if anything I'm actually recommending is legit or is backed by any like legit or evidence. So I started doing research and I found the top nine reasons Premiere Pro crashes and I found every minimal requirement and the video I just recorded previously, everything that I was recommending seemed to be in line with what Adobe's recommending and then others like, are recommending. So we're gonna go over all of the system requirements, the minimum requirements that you're gonna need for Premiere Pro according to Adobe. I'm gonna show you what my computer is actually using and how much RAM, what kind of graphics card I have and really when I upgraded my RAM, it was a huge game changer. So I'm gonna show you the statistics and why I say, and this is the, the minimum requirements that Adobe's recommending are probably just a little bit shy of what you actually need. And then we're gonna go through the top nine reasons that Premiere Pro crashes. And I know everybody has this issue with Premiere Pro, we all do. I'm to the point where I don't even have Premiere Pro autosave on anymore. I'm just comfortable enough, it very rarely crashes on me. We're gonna go over and cover all these things, so let's get into it. According to Adobe, your processor needs to be an Intel 6th gen or newer, and that's your CPU, also known as a processor. So I decided to Google and find a list of what those actually are. So your 6th generation Intel Core i7 processors, here's an entire list of all the processors, pretty much the minimum requirements that they suggest that you actually have. And then over here, it pretty much says the same thing, the minimum and then the recommended. So I wanted to do a little bit more research, so I started to dive into the CPU and I found that basically Adobe is recommending that the sweet spot be a, a core i7 or core i9 Intel processor or AMD equivalent. We strongly recommend fast clock speeds. You're looking for a clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz or higher. Eight cores are ideal for Premiere Pro. The application can use more cores, but without significant benefits added. Depending on the task, Premiere Pro runs at 93 to 98% efficiency with an eight core processor. I'm also going to leave links down in the description to other YouTube videos that actually explain exactly what a CPU is and how it works with Premiere Pro. So next is operating system. Obviously they're recommending Windows 10 for Windows. Down here for Mac OS, they're saying Mac OS um, 10.12 or the latest version. I just strongly recommend always staying the most up to date on your Mac. Apple constantly is making updates and improvements and fixing bugs. And I find that when you don't update your system regularly, you tend to have a lot of issues. And then the first thing that you're gonna do is when you call Apple, is they're gonna make you update your system. Always stay up to date on the operating system. That's kind of a no brainer. Next, that leads us into RAM. So this is where Adobe is recommending a minimum requirements of eight gigabytes of RAM. The minimum, the recommended for HD media, 16 gigs or if you're editing 4k media you want to be at 32 gigs i still think 32 gigs is a little on the short side so let me pull up my activity monitor i'm going to show you guys my specs really quick and then we're going to come back and really dive into the ram part after the fact so right now with everything i have going on i have a screen recording on i have premiere pro open i have my internet browser open adobe illustrator camtasia recording quicktime player and then i have adobe creative cloud suite running if you look up here camtasia is using 10 gigs of ram so my screen recording is using pretty much 10 gigs premiere pro just sitting idle not doing anything not even having a project open it's using seven gigs so when they say minimum of eight the second i tell adobe to do anything it's well above eight to run efficiently with multiple programs and everything that I have going on right now, you can see I need 41 gigs on my computer. When you have less RAM than what is needed, your computer decides what amount of RAM it's gonna delegate to what program. Meaning it doesn't matter if Premiere Pro needs 10, if everything else on my computer needs more, it's going to give a certain percentage of what Premiere Pro is actually asking for to that program. So things will run slower. So I strongly suggest getting 64 gigs of RAM. We're gonna dive into that more when we come back. All right guys, so next is hard drive. How much storage does your computer have? And we can see over here on Adobe's website, fast storage is critical for video production. Use solid state NVMe or SSD storage. Unless you have a fast enough RAID array, spinning disks generally do not offer significant speed for HD and 4K video production. Basically, Adobe is now saying that if you just have a standard hard drive, your hard drive is not going to be fast enough to provide that information, meaning give the content to Premiere Pro so that Premiere Pro can actually create the proxy files that it needs to basically edit in real time. So it's going to request that information from your hard drive. Your hard drive has to be able to grab it, send it back over to Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro needs to be able to process it. So I'm going to show you guys, and I'm going to dive into this a little 
little bit deeper. Solid state speed is particularly the most important fact where they shine. With the advancing SSD technology and bottlenecks removed, the difference is now stark. So basically, modern hard drives are capable of hitting speeds of say 150 megabytes per second or megabits per second, whereas SSDs can go up to 550 megabits per second read and 520 megabits per second write. And this article must be a little old because let me show you what mine are reading and writing at. So if I hit start over here, you can see my write speed is up to 730, 740, give or take. Now watch my read speed. My read speed's almost 2000, which is insane, especially for I'm um, have a screen recording going on right now. I'm using 30 gigs of RAM right now, and I'm still getting those read and write speeds. So it's super important that you have hard drives, especially a solid state hard drive. So the difference between a solid state and a regular hard drive right here, it says that difference is a hundred times faster. All right, guys, now here comes probably the most common question is the graphics card. What is the graphics card actually doing in Premiere Pro and why does it add value? So your graphics card is what is showing you your preview of your image. So when you're editing and you press play, in order to play that preview or show you your video, your graphics card needs to go to work and it needs to render that sequence. So the better the graphics card, the faster your render time. Let's dive into that a step farther. Let's see exactly what requirements Adobe recommends versus what the real world is actually saying, hey, this is what we need. So the GPU is used for on-screen rendering and export. Priority areas in the video production, Premiere Pro is engineered to take advantage of the GPU. After Effects is also GPU optimized. So graphics cards with at least four gigabits of memory, VRAM, optional multiple GPUs, including eGPUs, can be used to speed up the render and export time. So it's saying you need a, a graphics card that has four gig gigabytes of VRAM. But let's go ahead and dive into some of these new graphics cards. PurgeSystem.com has an amazing article. They benchmark these graphics cards all in Premiere Pro and they publish the results and they're really amazing. To sum it up, Premiere Pro benefits greatly from using a GPU, but which card is best depends on how GPU accelerated effects you use and whether you generally export H.264 slash HEBC. For most users, there's basically not much of a difference. And then it says you also want to focus on the VRAM, the video card memory down here it says minimum requirement for 1080 4k 6k so you want to have an 8 gig graphics card pretty much bare minimum to edit in 6k so if you got gopro footage which is 5k you're going to want to make sure that you have an 8 gig graphics card so if we jump over here to amazon really quick and i search graphic card you're going to see a ton of different graphic cards and you're going to see 10 gigabits 8 gigabit 2 gigabit that is your vram that is what you're looking for a card that has at least minimum of 4 gig if not 6 to 8 i highly recommend going with 8 now let's jump back over to purge the system and take a look at their statistics. You can see up here the new, this is the RTX 3090, 24 gigabit of VRAM. That's huge. That's gonna be enough VRAM probably to edit when 10K starts coming out. If you wanna be editing at the absolute best of the best level in Premiere Pro, you wanna get this new GTX 3090, 24 gigabit card. If I pull up exactly what I have in my iMac right now, I have a Radon Pro 580X, eight gigabit card. And you can see down here, the Radon RX Vega. I do not have the Vega. The Vega is actually a step up from the card I actually have installed in mine. And you can see what the benchmark on that did extremely well. So it actually made it to the, what is this? Probably their top 10 or top 15. I don't have any problems and mine is just a step below this. So I would assume mine probably benchmarks between uh, between 750 and 800. I'm going to leave links to all of these sites down below in the description. So you can come back and verify any of this information for yourself, check for updates, all that good stuff. So one more thing, I wanna jump back over here to CPU real quick because I found a great article, same site, same page on CPUs. You can see down here, here, the iCore 5, what the actual performance is. If we pull up the specs on my computer, you can see I have the three gigahertz, six core Intel i5, and I'm running again with Premiere Pro on optimal performance. I feel like I didn't need to upgrade all of these other things because of my server. It performs very well, and it allows my computer to stay very efficient. All right, guys, last thing we're gonna talk about is internet speed. I could dive into everything else a lot in a lot more detail and over explain things, but I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of the five most important aspects of what what requirements you're going to be needing to run at the optimal efficiency in Premiere Pro 2021 and moving forward. The last thing, and this is the one I really don't know a ton, a ton about. I tried doing research. There just wasn't much research out there to be found. Internet speed. From what I understand, you want to have a 10 gigabit WAN port. So if you look down here at this picture, you can see that this device has a 10 gigabit port on it. Other devices have just like the one gigabit ports. So according to Adobe, so according to Adobe, a one gigabit connection speed speed workstation is the minimum requirements in production. Having just a standard old school little ethernet cord plugged in with a one gigabit port is now the 
absolute minimum for Premiere Pro, they recommend the 10 gigabit port. So I actually have this router right here. So I actually have this router right here, the Rapture GTX AX 1100T tri-band 10 gigabit Wi-Fi router. It has the 2.5 gigabit, gigabit LAN port on the back of it. I have Cat 8 ethernet coming down, going into my server directly. And then again, it has the 10 gigabit port Wi-Fi or 10 gigabit Wi-Fi. I love this router. If I go into Google, test my internet speed, And you guys can see right there, those are my internet speeds, extremely fast. I absolutely love this router. It's designed specifically for gaming, so it gives you the ability to decide what device you're going to dedicate what amount of internet to. For example, if I'm rendering out a video and I need to make sure that everything's running at optimal efficiency, I can say, hey, my son's playing PlayStation, limit his Wi-Fi to X and give me the rest. That way his gaming doesn't pull away from my editing or vice versa.